Fear Not, Episode 92. Hi, I'm Billy Atwell, and I believe that consistently facing your fears is the only way to realize your truest self and to make those confident choices that will help you to obtain your deepest held hopes and dreams. I have faith that this podcast series will show you that you are not alone, that it will strengthen you and give you courage to face your fears, and that it will help you to permanently cross over into a life of living beyond your fears. Join me on this journey as we listen and learn from others as they share their experiences in facing and overcoming their own fears. You're productive, no question. Sometimes you're flying faster than a tornado, but to what end? It's like there's no practical link between your long-term goals and your daily tasks. But what if there was a tool to keep your goals visible all year long and helped you stay focused on the critical next steps to accomplish them? Well, there is. Michael Hyatt's approach to work is day by day, week by week, and quarter by quarter. His new full focus planner connects the dots and lets anyone put this approach to work for them. It's like an insurance plan for achieving your goals. Ever since I've started using the full focus planner, it has helped me to stay focused and reach my goals. It complements my digital calendar and has replaced all other organizers that I was using. It facilitates easy goal tracking and review, so I never lose sight of what matters most to me. It prioritizes my tasks, so I'm always maintaining momentum on the activities that will help me to reach my goals. It optimizes my weekend for maximum rest and rejuvenation. It goes with me everywhere I go, from my studio, to the coffee shop, to the park, wherever. The Full Focus Planner will equip you to plan your year, design your day, and achieve your biggest goals. Want to receive a 15% discount on the Full Focus Planner? Visit livingbeyondyourfears.com and click on the Full Focus Planner button on the sidebar. Hello, everybody. Today, you and I are going to be joined by Lisa Bard Panos. Hey, Lisa. Welcome back to the show. How are you today? I am good, Billy. How are you today? Yeah, I'm doing really well. Thank you. In her debut book, Big Girl Pants, Lisa explains that change can be as easy as changing your pants. She empowers people by helping them break the dead-end cycle of dream excuse dream. She helps uncovers what has kept them stuck, helps them to stop dwelling on excuses, and opens their hearts to opportunity and not live in fear, but in freedom. Lisa, could you take a few extra moments, you know, to explain to those who maybe hadn't catch our previous episode you know, who you are and a little bit about what you do? Absolutely, Billy. So I am a certified life coach and was trained under Dr. Dr. Martha Beck, who is Oprah Winfrey's life coach. So I went through life coach training with her and have been um, in my own business for four years coaching other people. And recently I just wrote a book called Big Girl Pants, like you had mentioned, and that, that really what I do is share uh, a lot of the stories, a lot of the, the tools that I teach my clients. So what I wanted to do was write a book to reach even more people and help people overcome these fears. And like you said, rewrite their stories and create a life that they love and not just one that, you know, they're going through the motions living day to day. Yeah. Um, when you were on the show last, you know, we were talking about your book and, uh, I read your book, and so that's where I really wanted to have you on because I'm really fascinated about this this technique that you teach people. So why don't we go ahead and get started? Okay. Lisa, could you first start by giving us your definition of fear, helping us to understand what fear is? Yeah, what I believe fear is is just a story you tell yourself that keeps you blocked. So we all have fears, and a fear is basically just a story, a belief uh, a block in the road. It's something that we each have to keep us safe, to protect us. It's an excuse um, as to why we aren't doing something. So really what fear is, is it's something outside of our comfort zone. And, and by stepping into that, going into that fear, um, that's when people get stuck. They get stuck in living the lives they want because they're afraid of X. They're afraid of what that could look like. So let's pretend you, you want a new job. Okay, so let's just pretend this is your this is your dream. You want to get a new job. You want to work for yourself. Let's just make that up, for example. So what happens is we have this an innate fear for going after something we want. For example, 
I want a new job. So what happens is we have this critter brain, this worry center of our brain that just says, no, there's no way I can do that. Okay. So this critter brain kind of signals fear and unpredictability and it causes a physical reaction to a mental problem, really. So what happens is immediately once we think we want to do something, our worry center jumps in and says, nope. And then the next step is our limbic system, the part of our brain associated with motivation and learning and memory comes up with reasons to support our initial reaction. So we come up with these reasons. Um, I can't, I can't find another job. I, or I can't afford to start my own company. I can't afford to quit. I can't afford to have my own private health insurance. I can't afford to hire people. I don't know what I'm going to be doing. I don't know how it's going to be done, et cetera. So again, we're going from a dream to our excuses. And then finally what happens is our cortex, the part of our brain that justifies our choices and our behaviors comes up with reasons to back out. Well, I'm really not that miserable in my job, right? I can stay where I am. I don't really need to go, you know, quit my job and and start my own business. It'll get better where I am. And so what happens is without even realizing it, we're talking ourselves out of what we want before we even give our time give ourselves time to support our desires. So that's kind of the dream excuse dream process of here it is something I really, really want. Okay. Whether it's a rewarding career or a better body or a travel fund or closer friendships or to communicate better or to stick up for yourself, whatever it is that you dream about that you desire. um, Our, our instinctive bodies will say, Oh, okay, no, I can't do that. I don't have enough time or money. I can't, I shouldn't, I'm too tired, I'm too scared, I'm not thin enough, smart enough, pretty enough, worthy enough, right? And so then that breaks our our dream, then we have an excuse, and so we don't act, we don't do anything with that. So we stay stuck in this world of, I want something else, but I don't really know how to go get it. And if I if I do take those steps, I'm scared. So it's like stepping into the unknown is much scarier than staying safe and staying protected where we are right now. So what I help my clients do is, is stop telling yourself these stories, stop making up these excuses as to why you can't do something and really tell yourself why you can. And that's where I help people kind of break down those, those roadblocks, those beliefs that they have. And so when someone comes to me and says, Hey, I want to do something I want to do, I want to run a marathon, but I can't. Okay. And they come up with their list of excuses why they can't. And I question each one of those excuses and ask them, is that really true? And once they learn to break these negative thoughts down, they, they learn that basically what's keeping them stuck are just their beliefs, their stories that they're telling themselves that are holding them back from, from taking that next step. So that was a long answer, <laughs> but that's kind of what, what I do. And that's the definition of fear to me is it's just something you're afraid of, something you something you want to do and a story that tells story you tell yourself that keeps you blocked and keeps you stuck. So how do we write a new story and get unstuck? That's a great question. So what we first need to do is just start to notice our thoughts. So every day we go about our days and we all have thoughts, millions and millions of them every single day, whether it's, you know, when you go to order coffee, what, what kind of, coffee do you want? Oh, I shouldn't have the, the new unicorn cappuccino because it's too many calories or whatever. Just start to notice all of the thoughts you have in your head. And that's always the first step because most times people don't even notice that they're thinking things. And then they don't even realize they're thinking negative things. They're just, they're thinking all the time and noticing what you're thinking is step one in breaking down fears. Absolutely. Just notice your thoughts. So Think of your think of your thoughts as like waves in the ocean, all right? They ebb and they flow. Some are going to be negative. Some are going to be positive. Um, and the secret isn't trying to stop those waves, but it's trying to to ride them and notice when they support you and when they don't support you. So number one is overcoming fears is just to notice your thoughts. And the second part is to question your thoughts. So that's the biggest thing. So asking yourself, this question, um, when you have a negative thought or a negative belief, just asking yourself, is it true? And, and once you start to practice doing this, ask yourself, is this true? Is this thought I have, is this belief I have true? 
it's a lot easier to break down that fear because most of the time it's not really, really true. So let's take, um, I want to go to Europe this summer. All right. So that's my dream or my desire or what I want to do next. So then we come up with, well, I, I, I can't leave my job for a week or five days. Okay. Is that actually really true? Or is that the story you're telling yourself? Maybe you have no time left to, at work, your, all your your work days or travel days or vacation days are gone. But what what I'm using here as an example is we come up with that reason of it's I can't I can't take those five days. Um, could you take them unpaid? Could you pull from next year? Could you? And I'm just making up stories here. But what happens is we have we already block our our answer. Nope, I can't. I can't travel, or I can't do this, or I can't afford it, or I can't. So really noticing. Um, what that thought is, and then asking yourself, is it true? So to make, to make this maybe a little more understandable, we have two kinds of pain. We have real pain, and we have imagined pain. So real pain is pain um, we feel physically or emotionally. So, for example, getting – like if you were hit by a car tomorrow, Billy, that would be real pain, okay? That hurts. That's real pain. That causes – that inflicts pain – on you. Imagined pain is the other kind of pain. And that's pain that comes from our thoughts or from our interpretations. So let's say you got hit by a car. That hurts. Let's say you started telling yourself stories about the person who hit that car. That person actually was friends with a friend of mine who doesn't like me and purposely came and hit me with a car. And you go down this path of, of storytelling. So deciphering the difference between Real pain and imagined pain is a huge game changer. So when you are starting to have a fear, okay, or a pain or anything like that, is it a real pain or is it an imagined pain? And really stopping and and noticing and questioning your thoughts. That is the number one way to start overcoming fears. So, again, we all have fears, every one of us. And I think I might have mentioned this on our last, on the last show. But, for example, I had this this fear of writing a book, writing my book, Big Girl Pants. So I started off with, I really want to write a book by the time I'm 50. That was my goal in my life. I want to write a book. I don't know what it's going to be about or whatever, but I want to write a book. So as I grew in my business, I realized, you know what? I really do want to write this book. I want to write a book and I want to share all the lessons I've learned and all the tools I've learned and all the things I've helped my clients with. And I want to share it to more people. So what what innately happens is my little critter brain says, no way, you can't write a book. Nobody's going to read it, and you're not going to write it well enough, and it's not going to be a good book, and it's got all these layers to why I can't. So what do I do? I put down the pen and paper and say, I can't do it. Okay, so then again, I have this dream, and then I have this excuse. But underlying is still that dream. Okay, so a month later, gosh, I st- something's still in me. I still want to write that book. So again, my critter brain or my 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 authentic self says, okay, I really want to do this, but my fear center says, nope, 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 you can't. So what I had to do was take each fear, each each thought I had, and really learn to break these down. Okay, so I can't write a book because. I'm not a good enough writer. Okay, fear number one. All right, is that true? Is that, am I making this up? Or is this a real true thing? Okay, I'm not the best writer in the entire world, but I'm not the worst writer in the entire world. I have a degree in English. I've been a copywriter. I can probably write. So it it almost breaks down that immediate fear of, okay, I just, that's a story I'm telling myself to keep me from writing the book. I'm not a good enough writer. So then next step is, okay, here's my next fear. Uh, Nobody's going to buy my book. All right. Is that true? Okay. Mm, My mom and dad will buy my book. There's two people, right? So then you start breaking down, okay, I bet these people will buy this book. And it's it's not this fear of nobody's going to buy my book. You start to change your, your wording. You start to change your beliefs. Okay, there are actually some people that will read my book. I bet all the clients that I worked with will read my book. I bet, you know, my friends will read my book. My family will read my book and so on. And it starts to break down that fear. So again, every, 
every fear we have is accompanied by an excuse. So I can't do it because. And it is our job, our role to get inside of our own heads, start talking to ourselves and say, oh, wait, I notice here that I'm trying to talk myself out of something I really, really want to do. And that's easy for us to do. We can all talk ourselves out of something because, like I said, that makes that keeps us safe. We don't have to actually then take the next steps to write the book. So I stay back here and say, all right, I'm not going to do it. But when I step into uncomfort, right, the only way to get through that fear is to step into that uncomfort and say, okay, I'm, I'm not really sure how it's going to look, but I really, really want to do it. And so I'm going to try to break down each of these fears as I go through this process. So as I start to write a book, every time I have a thought, right, oh, my gosh, this is terrible. This chapter doesn't work with the next chapter. And, oh, my gosh, you know, all these fears, I have to constantly be in my own head and say, keep going. You can do this. You can do this. You can do this. And so, again, I wrote the book. I came out the other side. I've sold hundreds and hundreds of copies. And here I am going from, oh my gosh, I was way too scared to write this. Nobody's ever going to read it to I've done it. And it's not as bad as I thought and nothing ever really is. And I think that's the key for, for everybody is the fear of what it looks like or what it could be like is much more scary than actually doing it. So I was on TV for the first time. I, I promised myself I would never public speak. I did not like public speaking. I had another fear of public speaking um, however, when I wrote my book, I thought, I can't just hide, right? I've written the book, and now I'm going to have to take another risk. I'm going to have to go out there and start public speaking. So I hired somebody to help with my PR, and first thing he did was get me on two live television shows. And you can imagine, my fear was, oh, my gosh, I can't do this. There is no way I'm not only going to just speak publicly, but I'm going to be on live television And so, again, I can't do it. My first thought was, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it. And then my my brain started saying, yes, you can. You could write the book. You can do all these things in your past you've wanted to do. You can get on and you can speak publicly. And so, again, I had to break down those fears, all those beliefs as to why I couldn't get on there and do that. And lo and behold, I got on TV. I did a live event. It lasted three minutes. And I came out the other side and I was like, oh my gosh, that was so easy. But I had spent a month preparing for worst. I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm not going to be good. What if I mess up? What if I fumble? Blah, blah, blah. And so I stayed, I, for a while I stayed stuck with I can't do it until I started breaking down that, yes, you can. You can do anything you set your mind to. You just have to set your mind to it. And now I can't get enough of it. I want to public speak all the time. I want to be on podcasts. I want to be on TV. I give um, work. I do more workshops. I'm constantly going for that thing that I used to be so completely afraid of because what happens is when you do it and you get to the other side, it's amazing. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. So I think that is a lot of it. Would you say that that when you get to the other side that you no longer fear, you, you've sort of established a new truth or is it just – you ignore it. What do you mean by that? Well, the feelings, the, the initial feelings of fear, um, do they dissipate? Or is it just they try to keep you still from not moving forward? You've just sort of armed yourself with a new truth? Well, I think once, I've got, once you go through and you get to the other side, you can, you can look back and you can say, oh, my gosh, all those beliefs I had, all those, all those thoughts that I had, none of them were true, right? They were, they were justified because we all have, you can't say, oh, I shouldn't have these feelings. We do have these feelings. But the new truth is that all those things I worried about were never true. So I read a, in my book, I write a chapter about when I was in college, I had the opportunity to go scuba diving in the Great Barrier Reef. And I had been scuba diving with my father before and my family, but I went on this expedition to Australia without any family, without anyone I knew. And so while I was there, there was an opportunity to go scuba diving in the Great Barrier Reef. And I thought, eh, I should probably do this. What are the chances I'm ever coming back? But my fear was, oh my gosh, I'm scared, you know, and I, I got on the boat, I did it anyway. And I, I told the gentleman who was my partner, you're paired up with somebody um, 
just as a safety precaution, when you go down and scuba dive, I was paired with somebody who didn't speak any English. Actually, nobody on the boat spoke English, but I was trying to tell the guy, hey, it will not go into caves. I absolutely am claustrophobic. I will not go, on, go into a cave, period. So we go, we put on our masks, snorkels, um, everything, go down. We start going down, and I'm at the bottom of the ocean, and we're swimming along, and all of a sudden I see this big giant hole. And I thought, oh, my gosh, this is a cave. And I signaled to my partner. I was like, no, no way, I'm not going. And he, he kind of looked at me, and I don't think he obviously realized what I had said on the boat had he not because he wasn't speaking English and he just started swimming into this cave and I had a total panic attack. No, this is my, this is my fear, right? I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. I'm going to die. I'm going to die here in the bottom of the ocean. Nobody's going to know where I am. And so at that moment I had a choice. I could go back up or I could go into the cave and I followed this, this, guy and my group and I just started going into the cave and the whole time I'm trying to regulate my breathing I'm trying not to have my um myself hit hit the top of the cave when I'm trying to to keep buoyant or you know keep uh at an at a normal level I guess when you go through a cave you're you know you have to maintain your weight and so I was going into the cave and all I could think about was I was going to die I was going to die and I realized at that moment, I have to get a hold of myself. Like, I can't continue to do this. I will run out of air and I will die. So I slowly started breathing. And I slowly started just focusing on, okay, breathe in slowly, breathe out slowly. And as I did it, my body started to relax. And I slowly started to notice, like, the sea urchins and the, the beauty in the side of the cave. And I started telling myself, you know what, I can do this. I can do this this is actually really cool. Like I can't believe I'm in the bottom of the great barrier reef and swimming through here. And when I came out on the other side, Billy, I, it was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my entire life. And it just really has stuck with me forever because it was that it's like a metaphorical cave. We all have of going into something that's super, 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 super scary. And then coming out the other side and realizing, oh my gosh, what an experience this was. And I'm, I'm okay, right? I, I lived through it. I'm here. I, I'm enjoying this natural beauty. Had I not gone in, um, I never would have experienced that. And I think that that's really what I, I love to help my clients with is think of, think of whatever it is you are afraid of as that metaphorical cave. You have to go into it. You have to swim through it. And you will get to the other side and you don't know what the other, other side looks like because nobody does. Nobody knows what tomorrow is going to hold, but you have to kind of go into it and talk yourself into, you know what? I can do this. I can do this. So I have, I have a group, um, a private, private Facebook group called big girl pants. And just last week, somebody wrote in there that they wanted to run a half marathon this week. This was their goal. And last year they couldn't do it. And we really focused on your thoughts as you're doing it, as you're doing your half marathon, you need to be talking to yourself. You need to be coming up with that new truth. As you say, the new truth is I can do this. I will do this. This is how I'm going to feel at the end of it. And imagine yourself standing there at the finish line, because that is the difference between success and failure. If you're going to focus on not being able to do it, you're not going to do it. If you focus on being able to do it, and surviving and getting to the other side and looking back and saying, wow, I just did it. That's what we need to focus on. So again, the in answer to your question again was it is a new truth. It is a, this is the truth. I know now if something is really scary in front of me, something I'm really afraid of. I know that the only thing that's really holding me back from doing that are my stories, right? And my beliefs and, and my excuses. Lisa, could you, Help us to understand the difference between, you know, maybe explain about what authentic self is versus the social sort of expectations, because I know that that can really kind of trip us up, too. Absolutely. So we all kind of have this keen ability to alter who we are in different situations. OK, so I could walk into um, a dinner and I could be I could pretend like I'm somebody else. And, and the difference kind of between the authentic self and the social self is 
we sometimes we alter our personalities almost when we're in different situations. So we have this fear of what will other people think of me or am I going to be successful or um, am I going to be embarrassed or whatever. We have these, we have these long lists of fears like we've talked about. And so what we really need to notice is are we, are we acting as our authentic self or our social self? So to make this more clear, we have two selves. Each of us has two different selves. One is our authentic self, and that is who we are at the core. It's who we are when there's no one around to judge us. Um, there's no one giving us advice. So the authentic self is, is the us stripped of expectations, all right? It's the person who makes decisions based on what we want, um, not what everyone else wants. And the authentic self isn't concerned with pleasing anyone else. The authentic self is just primarily to please our own self, to be the real us. Um, so the social self, on the other hand, is who we are based on who we think we should be. So oftentimes society dic- dictates this. Our family, our friends, teachers, mentors, coworkers, people you randomly run into at the grocery store. So the social self is the version of you who makes choices based on what's acceptable to everyone else. So the problem is, we lose track a lot of times of, am I, am I doing something because I authentically want to do something or am I doing something because I think I should, right? So let's go back to my book example. Am I writing my book because I really, really, really want to or am I, am I writing my book because I had a degree in English and I was an English teacher and I should because that's what I should do because I had, I had this degree and I have this ability to write and edit or whatever. So it's deciphering. Am I doing this authentically? Cause it really feels good to me. It's something I really, really desire. Or am I doing it because it would look good on my resume or it would look good to my dad or why am I doing things? So I think a lot of times the fear comes with uh, not really knowing who we are and, and asking ourselves, why are we doing this? So not only is it the, what do we want to do? Okay, so what is it that we desire? What is it we crave? Um, and then asking ourselves, why? Why are we doing this? Are we doing this for ourselves or are we doing this for somebody else or to appear a certain way? So the difference there is when you jump into a fear, when you, when you make a decision in life or when you're trying to create this life you crave, why are you doing it? Who are you doing it for? Most importantly, all right, why do you want it? Um, and then questioning what it is that's holding you back from getting that. So, again, it's kind of a step-by-step process, figuring out who you are authentically, figuring out what you want, figuring out what's holding you back, which, like we talked about, are the fear, the fear of failure, fear of embarrassment, all those fears. And then the next steps, like we talked about, are how you're going to get there. So, you know, taking action steps. What is the one thing you can do today to get closer to that dream or that desire? Um, So again, really knowing ourselves is, is a huge component of overcoming fears and creating crave worthy lives. Lisa, if someone would like to connect with you, what's the best way for them to do that? Um, They can connect with me through email, um, which is Lisa at lisapanos.com or through my website, lisapanos.com. And what parting advice would you like to leave with us today? I would love everybody who is even thinking about doing something really, really scary, something that they dream of or desire to write that down on a piece of paper. What is it that you want? Ask yourself, why do you want it? Are you doing this for you? And then what is one thing you can do today to get closer to that dream or that goal? And my, my parting thought is you can, you can do whatever you want. You can create whatever you crave with, with a change in mindset and with a belief in yourself. Everything is possible. Lisa, I really want to thank you so much for coming back on the show today and helping us to get on stuff, to write a new script and to create a new life for ourselves. I really appreciate you sharing and spending time with us today. 
Well, thank you, Billy. I love to be on your show, and this has been a pleasure for me as well. So thank you. Thank you for joining me today. And remember, you cannot achieve everything, but you do have the God-given ability to achieve anything. So stay focused, out of fear, and keep on keeping on. Until next time, be well and peaceful. For more information on today's episode and guest, or for resources that will assist you in overcoming your fears, visit livingbeyondyourfears.com. And don't forget to subscribe to this podcast, where three times a week we move to a life beyond our fears.